welcome all to physics talk for the tamil version of this video take the link from the description box we are going to see engineering physics 2 for the departments of computer science it triple e ece in our video series in our class 1 we are going to see the unit 1 conducting materials Generally materials are classified into three major types conductors insulators semiconductors in our semester portions we will cover all three topics chapter wise first conductors what is conducting materials if the material permit the electrical power or heat to pass through it that materials are called as conductor if the material is not permitting to pass through them they are known as insulators and what about semiconductors semiconductors are the materials which can act as both in different cases case 1 at the absolute zero that is zero kelvin it will act as a insulator at the above temperature high temperature of zero kelvin it will act as a conductor second point resistivity what is mean by resistivity resistivity is the tendency or capacity of the material to block the electricity or heat which is try to pass through them for conductors it is very very low so the electricity or heat can pass through them very easily for insulators it is very high for semiconductors it is in between to them in approximate range for conductors it is 10 to the power of minus 5 ohm meter for insulators it is above 10 to the power of ohm meter for semiconductor it is in between to them what are the examples for conductors we are all aware about it every materials that is metals are the good conductors if you are constructing a wire we will place a copper rod inside because it is a very good conductor the example of insulators are wood paper mica and the insulation around the wire that is plastic is also very good example for insulators what are the examples of semiconductors germanium silicon aluminum okay in this chapter we are going to see about conducting materials so some current is going to pass through some materials first of all what is conductor sorry what is current current is a movement of charged particles okay what is charged particles where it is charged particles are present inside the atom every material in the universe is made up of atoms inside the center core of the atom is nucleus which contains positive charges around them electrons that is negative charged electrons will revolve around it in neutral atoms the number of positive charge and negative charge of the atom is equal if the electron is detached from the atom and the atom becomes ion that is positive ion the electron become negative Yeah. Okay. So we know that some charged particle is moving from one place to another place means that is current. So every particles having the atom and every atoms having the charged particles and why some materials are acting as conductor and some materials are acting as insulators and semiconductor etc. So that reason is the thing we are going to see in next step the conducting properties of the material is depend on number of free electrons not the number of electrons okay what is free electrons when the electron is detached from the atom and it is moving around the metals within the border of the metal that freely moving metal ele electron is known as free electrons so the free electrons can move from one place to another place inside the metal very easily that metal ele electrons are known as 
free electrons. The next one we are going to see about electron theory of metals. Okay. What is electron theory? And what are the properties is going are going to explain by the electron theory? The materials property of properties, electrical property, thermal property, structural property, elasticity of the material, binding property of the solids, and whether the material is conductor, semiconductor, or an insulator. These are all the things will explain by the electron theory of metal. So far, there are three electron theory have been proposed. One is classical free electron theory. Another one is quantum free electron theory. The next one is band theory. It is also known as Brillouin zone theory. In this chapter, we are going to cover all these three theorems and the properties of the material which is explained by these theorems and the success and failures of all three theorems. Okay. First, we are going to start with classical free electron theory. It is a macroscopic theory. It is proposed by Drude and Lawrence in 1900. Some of the postulates for classical free electron theories are there are two cases. One is absence of external electric field. Another one is presence of external electric field. The first case we are going to see now in the absence of external electric field. It is the free electrons are considered as a gas molecules present inside the vessel, which can easily move throughout the vessel. As like the gas molecules, electrons, free electrons will move freely inside the metal within the boundary of the metals like this. This is the first postulate in the first case of classical free electron theory. The second one. The force between the conduction electron and the ion core is not considered. That means, what is ion core? I already explained in the previous slide. When the electron is detached from the atom, the atom becomes ion. That is positive ion. So, the free electrons is also known as conduction electron and valence electron. So, if um, the electrons are moving around the metal, it is a negative charge. Electrons are negative charge and the ion cores are positive. We know that uh, the, there will be a force between the positive and the negative. That force is neglected in this case. And the third point is, we are not considering the potential energy of the electron. We are considering as zero. We know that the total energy of the electron is kinetic energy plus potential energy. So, in this theorem, we are going to consider only the kinetic energy, not the potential energy of the electron. And the fourth point is the collision. Okay. What is collision? When a free electron moving randomly throughout the metal, it will collide it will collide each other and also collide with lattice. What is lattice? Lattice is the place of atom present in the metal. The arrangement of atoms, the arranging place is known as lattice point. Okay. The, when an electron is moving around the metal, it will collide with each other and also lattice point. So, when it is collided, it won't lose its energy or it won't gain any energy from the neighboring electrons. So, that is called elastic collision. We are going to consider the collision between the free electrons and also with latter this elastic collision. Now, we are going to see the second case. The presence of external electric field. When I am applying an electric field to a metal which containing a electric sorry which containing the free electrons when i am applying uh, the electric field in this direction the free electrons will move opposite to the direction of apply electric field that is positive direction it will move to the opposite direction of the 
apply electric field. This is the first point. And the second point is that, that the electrons are considered as a perfect gas. So, it wants to obey the laws, theorems which will obey by the perfect gas. So, electrons will obey the classical kinetic theorem and also the Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. Now, we are going to see about the important terms of the free electrons. First one, drift velocity. What is drift velocity? When I am applying an electric field to the metal, it will move to the opposite direction. This is the first point we saw in the postulate. So, the electron is gaining some velocity. That velocity, that average velocity is known as drift velocity. The average velocity gained by the free electron in a particular direction due to the external electric field is known as drift velocity. The next one is mobility. We are going to see about the mobility of the free electrons. So, what is mobility? For per unit electric field, how much drift velocity is gained by the electron? That is known as mobility when an external electric field is applied. So, drift velocity of a free electron per unit electric field applied in it is known as mobility of the material. It is ex it is expressed in the term of mu. Mu is equal to Vd by E. The next one is relaxation time. It is indicated by tau. What is relaxation time? Okay. First, what is relaxation? When we are in disturbed position, we will take some time to come back to our stable position, that is equilibrium position. That time taken is known as relaxation time. So, for a free electron, in the case of free electron, when we are applying an external electric field, it is moving opposite direction by gaining some drift velocity. Isn't it? So, when it is disturbed towards the particular direction and it will take some particular time to come back to its equilibrium position. So, that time taken is known as relaxation time. Tau is equal to L by Vd. I am going to give a simple example for this one. When we are switch on the fan, the fan will start to move. When I am uh, switch off the electrical power, it will move for some time and it will come back to its equilibrium position after few minutes. That few minutes is known as relaxation time. Clear? So, tau is a term indicated by the relaxation, indicated to the relaxation time and it is equal to L by Vd. L is the distance travelled by, the disturbed distance travelled by free electrons. Vd is the drift velocity. What is collision time? Okay. We already considered that when a, when a free electrons are moving randomly throughout the metals, it will collide each other. It will collide each other. So, the average time taken by the free electron between two successive collisions, the next next first collision is known as collision time. It is indicated by tau c is equal to lambda by v. Lambda by v. Lambda is the main free path. What is main free path? Between the two successive collision, the average distance is known as main free path. The average distance is known as main free path between two collisions. The average time taken between two successive collision is known as collision time. And for, la for lambda, that is main free path, just cross multiply V into tau C, we can get the main free path. Thanks for watching my video. For continuing this video, we will see in the next class. Thanks for watching. If you having any doubt, please ask in the comment box.